Greetings, everybody. So glad to see you today. Um, it's really bright today. I actually have a little bit of glare and I haven't had that for a while. So um, the sun is really bright and um, it's going to be kind of hot and dry for a few days. So I'm anticipating that um, that we're all going to be dragging a little bit over the holiday weekend. And as we anticipate that, we have these readings for Labor Day weekend that I think will, will help us focus on how to ease our weariness at least a little bit with the help of God. And so our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, and it's verses 27 through 31. Why do you say, Jacob, and declare, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My God ignores my predicament. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. What a wonderful word from our God today. And from Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all of you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear. And my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, a beautiful reading from today. Amazing how much we need to hear these passages over and over and over and over again. So, I used to think back in the day when I was one of those youths who would still get weary, but, but was a lot younger, that, um, yeah, we can be tired, but, but, you know, we can just soldier through, right? We can keep going. And now I know that we actually do have some limits. Go figure. And these limits keep us from having bigger problems later on. And that's a very good thing that we have these limits. But it also can make us feel exhausted, weary. And we hear that a couple times in this reading, in these two readings. Weariness that comes from all of our hard work piled on top of itself. And it seems like there's always more to do. We sort of started getting to this um, topic not long ago, and I want to continue into it today. So I want us to think as we start here, I want us to think about what really does make us tired. Because, you know, I think we think that what makes us tired is all the work we do. And granted, we do a lot of work. In fact, we are a society that is overworking itself um, more than maybe any of the others before. So, oh, our weariness, partially, comes from overworking. Did you guys get all exhausted with my little fake yawn there? Um, <laughs> it is contagious, I know. But as we, oh, 
work super hard. Is it really the, the work that we're doing that is exhausting us? Or are there some other things in, in our lives and world that are bringing us this weariness? that we take with us into every task. So we start weary, in other words. Let's just think about that for a moment. Is it because we have to do things? Or is it because sometimes we feel like we're in such a rush that we don't do things right? And it actually ends up taking more time than it would have if we'd have done it right. Maybe, maybe when we get stressed out and busy, we don't make the best choices. And that causes us to have even more of a crisis of time. For example, maybe we do need to unwind after work before we go to bed. But maybe we could read one chapter instead of the whole book. Or maybe we could watch a half hour show instead of a whole movie. Our choices and our decision making get impaired when we get busy. And so that can make us even more tired. Is it because when we do rest, we don't choose the right rest? Just sleeping, for example. Let's say our rest is to just sleep. Is that a rest that actually feeds our soul? Or is that a rest that seems like it's going to make us feel better? And in the end, we wake up as tired, if not more tired than we were to start with. Is it exhausting to constantly give up your plans, your hopes, and your dreams? Because now you have no control over them. Giving up control is exhausting. We all want to just take control of, of our lives. We, wanna, we want to be able to um, make the choices and do the things that, that make us sovereign but it turns out we're not made to be that and that struggle we have continuously of wanting to be in charge and needing to not be in charge can be exhausting not even the act of being in charge or not being in charge but the struggle within us is exhausting. Sometimes it's not because we don't rest. It's because we don't get good rest. It's because we're not making good choices. It's because we're wasting time when we think we're saving time. And we struggle. But wow, is this not the best scripture passage ever for this, Matthew 11. All who are struggling hard, come to me. All you who are carrying heavy loads, you know, that's not just Jesus saying you're, you're picking up rocks. That's Jesus saying there are some things weighing upon you. And all those who are carrying those heavy loads, come to me and I will give you rest. Now, I'm not going to give you rest by completely taking your yoke away from you. That's a misconception. Jesus doesn't want us to do absolutely nothing. That's not even restful for most of us. For most of us, it's not... It's not whether or not we do, it's what we do that makes us so exhausted. So when Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, Jesus isn't saying, I will give you nothing to do. I will make everything 
go away and you can just lay on your couch all day. That is not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, you're going to have a yoke to bear, but it's going to be a lot easier. Because we weren't made to not have a yoke. We were not made to do nothing. But sometimes, sometimes we bear the wrong yoke. And bearing the wrong yoke makes us weary. For example, having no purpose can make us exhausted. I remember when I was in college and I was, oh my goodness, at my wit's end with my schedule and with everything that I was juggling at the time, it was very overwhelming. And I went in and talked to the counselor about it. I knew her very well. So um, we, we just sat down and had a conversation one day when I was um, near her anyway. She, she was just a door down from where I did my work study, one of my three jobs at the time. And when I was when I was there, I said, you know, can I get like 15 minutes today? And she said, sure. And I said, she said, what, what's going on? And I said, I am having trouble with my schedule. It's overwhelming. And so she asked me to lay out everything that I was doing. And I, I did, I laid out, I laid out what jobs I was working and why I needed those particular jobs. I needed to do work study because I signed those checks directly over to the school that paid my tuition. Um, I needed to waitress because I got tips and I could work fewer hours if I did that job compared to another job. I needed to, to volunteer some of my time and my effort. And so I absolutely had to um, do something for others. And so I was in a couple of organizations that accomplished that, that were not super heavy on time, but did take some. And I taught Sunday school on Sunday mornings and that helped. I had to take a full load of classes because I was paying for everything myself and I couldn't get done in the amount of time I needed to if I didn't fill my schedule. And I had to do some homework at some point in time. So that was kind of non-negotiable. And I also had to have time for my friends and family because they're very important to me and Sometimes when that falls to the wayside, everything else just crumbles. So I had to have that scheduled in. And as we looked at the schedule, it was unforgiving. I had my life planned out to about the 15 minutes. That, that's all I had was 10 or 15 minutes here or there. And the counselor looked at me and said, I mean, you have to give something up. There's too much. And said, what can you give up in the schedule? And I looked at it and I said, I don't think I can give up anything out of the schedule. And she said, well, there's nothing I can help you with. And I said, no, you have helped me tons. And she said, why? And I said, because I forgot the purpose for the things that I was doing. And when I forgot the purpose, I was no longer hoping in the Lord. I was no longer um, hoping and feeling that sense of purpose for each task. I didn't even change what I was doing, but the yoke became lighter. Jesus can make our yoke easier to bear, our burdens lighter, because with God, we, we have these great benefits that come. We know that the things we're doing, we're doing for a purpose. We're doing for the right reasons. 
we can keep our perspective. You know, when we when we look at what we do as a ministry for others, it helps us not feel so sorry for ourselves and um, think think of ourselves as victims but rather it helps us look at other people's lives and situations and give thanks to god that that we have such a beautiful life it helps us when we embrace the yoke of christ be in community with each other where we can support each other one of the things I found um, when, when I was talking to the counselor was I had put myself in places that I forgot I put myself. And sometimes I felt too busy to do them. And I remembered when I talked to her how important it was to go to the study group. Even if I didn't need help studying. Um, it helped give me that community and that support with others who were who were doing the same thing. And together, we could be a community. And I felt so much more supported when, when I was a part of that community. Christ's yoke is one of community and mutual support. We have each other. We've got each other's backs. I, uh, we, we this week had sickness in my family and I had to go to Muscatine and bring a baby back. And we had a baby this week at our house, a three, three month old baby, um, because my, my sister had COVID and my dad was in the hospital and my stepmom was, she would never admit it. She would never admit her limits, but this is one of those ways I'm going to tell you we're part of a community. Um, because she was too overwhelmed and she never would have said it, but we knew. And so we went, we, we, we picked up Raya and we, we had a Raya sunshine all week and it was wonderful. It was a lot of work, but we knew the whole time that the work we were doing was for the right reason that and we were blessed with the yoke because we knew that it was right and we knew that we had supportive community just like my stepmom did so when I had an all-day meeting and there was a couple hours in there that I didn't know what to do with the baby because I didn't have any supervision for her because Jay was in the same meeting I was and um you know, Alex was teaching and Megan was at work and Jazz was going to come get get her later. But, oh my goodness, we have this two hour window and um, it just so happened. I didn't even have to call, but I was talking to Melanie who said, I know you have a baby this week, so let me know if you need anything. And I said, oh, I got this meeting coming up. And so Melanie happened by, by amazing, amazing luck, had, had a little help of her own that day. Brindley was there to help out and that was super, super wonderful. And so they, they watched Rhea for about two hours while I went to my meeting and Jazz was not done yet with class. Jazz came down after class and, and, in a beautiful act of community, we all were able to take on a yoke that was hard. And yet, it felt light because there was purpose, because it was Christ's yoke and no longer just us making busy work us toiling for the sake of toiling. It wasn't Ecclesiastes where, where we're just working and working and working and there's no purpose. It's different. It's Christ's yoke. Sometimes we forget that getting rest can mean 
taking up a different yoke, not just laying one down. Take up the cross of Christ. Take up the yoke that is light, that gives your life purpose, that reminds you of, of the person, keeps you in perspective of what matters, that helps you to make better choices. And knowing that you're making good choices can make you feel better about the work you do. Uh, a yoke that comes with a whole community of people who are also bearing the same yoke together. So we're never alone in what we carry, but we're always a part of a community together. And never forgetting this, this very important line from Isaiah. I hope you didn't forget that. Those who hope in the Lord renew their strength. It's, it's not the ones who, um, who take a break. It's not the ones who... Uh, do things for themselves and reward themselves for their hard labor by, you know, buying a boat or, you know, retail therapy. Those things seem like they're going to feel good, but they never feel as good. Never feel as good as hoping in the Lord. Those who hope in the Lord renew their strength. Those who take up the yoke of Christ renew their strength. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying overwork. That's a terrible habit. Stop doing that. I know I'm preaching to myself here, aren't I? But, but if you're going to work, this is what Colossians says, right? If you are going to work, work for the Lord. Because that yoke is so much easier to bear. This week, hope in the Lord and renew your strength. Do things for the right reason. Keep things in perspective. Find your purpose again. Be in community with each other. Use your gifts, not just your time. And you will find your rest in Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us our rest. Amen.